Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my talk about the Arctic Report Card 2018 and how these massive changes in the Arctic can be thought of as basically changes to the pushes on the, you know, the Earth is in a stable state, or was, and these pushes to the system are perturbing things. Now, within limits, you're okay, but you... If you exceed these limits, then you get a hot, you get a jump to a different state. Okay, you get an abrupt transition. So all what abrupt climate change is all about. And if we cross enough tipping points, if you like, in the system, and get enough state changes, then we can get permanent changes to the climate system that we can't recover from, no matter how many fossil fuel um, emissions. Uh, we slash and you know the only way we can maybe go past go back to states that we were in before is by huge interventions of carbon dioxide removal and solar radiation management to restore climate stability okay so I'm talking about Greenland was where I left off so this is data from the Arctic report card and what we have here is, this is ablation anomalies relative to the average, 1961 to 1990. And what you can see is these regions here were negative anomalies. There's less ablation. There's a few regions here with more ablation. And uh, this is just year to this is just, there is year to year variation. Now, if you take a um, okay, so what we can do is if we take a transect along the green line, okay, go from low altitudes here, about f less than 400 meters, to about 1,500 meters here, okay, so that's the scale axes here, and we can look at the um, surface mass balance. So is there, and this is a yearly, over the year, is there more accumulation of snow at, at this particular altitude, or is there more melt? Okay, now the mass balance is negative here. This is in meters, so the surface mass balance is really in, it's a change in the surface height in me meters of water equivalents. Okay, so what we see here is... Um, so this is a mean in 1990 to 2018 is the line here. And what we can see is what's happened in 2016 to 2017 and 2017 to 2018. Okay, so 2017 to 2018, um, the, the mass balance was not quite as uh, low as it had been in the, in the mean. Okay, so it just was, there were colder conditions. That's why the ablation here is below the uh, average this particular year. And, uh, but what you can see is the, how, the, how it varies here. Okay, as you go up to higher and higher elevations, it gets colder. So there's less and less, you know, eventually you reach zero here at about 1,500 meters. So this is when the amount of snowfall at that location is balanced by the amount of melting in the, in the summer months. Okay, so the altitude of the ice at that location is when the, when the mass balance is zero meters, it's basically the height is the same. But as you go to lower and lower elevations, you get more and more melting. This is how the albedo is changing throughout the years. Okay, this is June, July, August albedo. Okay, so it's in the red curve. Okay, so there is variations. The lowest, it's about 60% reflectivity. The highest, about 75 or so. This is an average over a region. And this is the surface mass balance. So, you know, and it, it's actually matching fairly closely. It's the blue, the blue curve. Okay. Um, so... This is showing the albedo, okay, the 
Albedo averaged over the entire ice sheet for June, July, August. Okay, and it shows it over various years. Okay, so what you can see is, you know, this is as low as just below 77% reflectivity, you know, and it's almost, it's not quite 82% in these years here. So there is quite a bit of variation from, from year to year. And a lot of that depends on how much snowfall there is over Greenland. Because of course, fresh snow is much more highly reflective than the older snow. So if there's not much snow and if there's a lot of precipitation events, then the albedo will be really low. Greenland will absorb a lot more sunlight. There'll be a lot more melt. Okay, and but we can measure the overall volume loss of ice, mass loss of ice from Greenland by the, um, it's from, we determine that from the gravity anomaly satellites, the gray satellites. So in 2018, what you can see is that the, um, the, the anomaly in the albedo relative to, to a period 2000 to 2009 here is there was a lot of snow in the lower regions here, so it's more reflective. And uh, as you get higher and higher, there's less snowfall, but it's still more reflective. Um, so, this was a, so, so this was a year where the Greenland melt on the surface of the ice because of local weather conditions was not as significant, was not as high as in other years, but there's still huge melting of the ice from below because a lot of this ice is grounded on, uh, along the edges, is grounded on bedrock that is well below sea level. So the warm ocean is coming in and it's melting the ice from below in significant amounts. These are different stations on Greenland. This is September, October, November. Um, 2017, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. And this is the temperature anomaly at this particular station for, the, for this time period. Okay, so 2.7 degrees Celsius above normal, for example. Okay, so you can see how the anomalies vary at all of the different stations. And this is when a record was set here. Okay, 6.3 degree um, anomaly at, so, so they're at this particular station, okay? And so there were some records at some different stations, but the data is there for all the stations, okay? So there's lots of information there. Now, as far as marine terminating glaciers are concerned, so these are glaciers along the coastlines that go into the ocean, okay? Have ice shelves in the ocean. So this is the net area change in square kilometers the total area change at the 47 major Greenland marine terminating glaciers. So those glaciers are all listed in these regions. And this is from 2000 to present day. And what we can see is that the area of these terminating glaciers is all is declining rapidly. I mean, look at this trend line coming down and it's tapered off a little bit here. Okay, now remember most of the Loss is, of course, during the summer when the sun's up 24-7 and the ocean water is a lot warmer and it's coming underneath and it's um, ablating away, it's melting away the ice underneath. So when we go to a blue ocean event and the whole ocean is warming much more than it is now, it's not, you know, the air temperature will be much, you know, rapidly warming won't be pegged at zero because there's no ice left to keep the, for the latent heat effect to keep it at zero, then the temperatures are going to increase significantly and, the, and Greenland is in trouble basically. Okay, now I'm going to talk a bit about sea ice here. Now I've talked extensively about it, so I'm just going to talk about what it says here in the, in the uh, report. The trends are still declining in the summer maximum, winter minimum extents. Okay, uh, declining trend in the summer maximum. Summer minimum, this is reversed. Summer minimum, winter maximum. Okay, they're both declining. Um, didn't set records. There's certain areas like the Bering Sea where there's a huge dearth of ice. There's very, very little ice. Okay, so this is showing um, this is March 
when we have the sea ice maximum. So this is the ice edge here, 1981 to 2010 average. And this is what we had in 2018, the white line. So we're significantly within. A lot of ice missing here in the Bering Sea. A lot of ice missing up here in these regions. This is the September minimum. Okay, this is again the, the average, the third average over 30 years, the climatology if you like, and we're significantly lower. Okay, so the trends are all downward for, for the sea ice. This is the March maximum and the percentage difference change from the satellite era start about 79 to present day. And you can see there's less and less ice in March. Okay, so the ice isn't forming as much over such a large extent. And, but you can see in September the minimum. You can see how the trends are here. A huge dip here, 2007. Huge dip here, record minimum, 2012. And there's variability and the trend is sharply down to no sea ice. Okay, this is uh, showing that the ice, the thick ice is almost all gone in the Arctic. So this was in 1985, week 11 of the year, five-year ice, four-year ice, three-year, and the, the multi-year ice is stronger. It's got less bubbles. It's almost completely fresh water. So all the brine pockets have been expelled by gravity. They've, they've gone out the bottom of the ice. You know, here we are in 2018, week 11, you can compare this. There's almost no five-year ice, four-year ice, and so on. So the four-year ice is basically, the multi-year ice is basically on its way out. Okay, so there's some two-year ice still, but most of the ice is very, very young. It's very fragile. It's very brittle. It's at the mercy of the wind and waves. And it's very, it's just held by the ocean circulation. So if the weather patterns change, this whole thing can just float off into the Atlantic. Boom, no more sea ice all of a sudden. Okay, and it's getting a lot thinner. This is the thickness anomaly in 2018, just compared to 2017. This is showing data from winters 2012, 2010, 2011, and so on up to 2017, 2018. And you can see that the ice is not very thick. I mean, this is only, this is, this is by month. You know, the ice is thickening up throughout the winter and it's only, um, you know, a couple meters thick. So it's very, very fragile. There's no thick ice left, really. This is showing uh, snow depth in the Arctic. Of course, you know, the snow is sort of got a couple factors. You know, if you've got nice fresh snow on the ice and it reflects the sunlight, so there's less absorption, less melting of the ice. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, it, but it's also an insulator. So if there's lots of snow on the ice, then the ice won't form as thickly um, once the air temperature gets cold. Okay, so it's a double-edged sword. This is in the Bering Sea in this region. This is the average from 79 to 2016, the extent in the Bering Sea of the ice. This is what we had in 2018. Now you can see these faint lines here and here. This was the variation. This was the minimum maximum range in previous years. So 2018 was, you know, look at, look how, I mean, the ice is basically, you know, there's very little ice in this particular region. Okay, so there's certain regions that are affected. Now, in terms of sea surface temperature, again, I refer you, you know, have a look at uh, Earth, um, Google Arctic sea ice graphs, rather, and just have a look at the data there. But basically, you know, this is in 2018 compared to 2017. So this is sea surface temperatures. You know, this is um, the freezing point is about minus 1.8. You know, that's for seawater. Um, the anomaly is up to eight degrees here, or this is sort of, this is sea surface temperatures. This is the anomaly, 2018 versus the longer term average. So some areas are very hot. This is 2018 versus 2017 and sort of the trend over time. So less and less ice, warmer and warmer water. So this is the anomaly in the, in the Barents Sea and in the Chukchi Sea. And you can see that the temperatures are